In this week's Tableau Tip Tuesday, I'm going to show you how to build line charts like the one you see on this screen here. That's really just a combination of an area chart and a line chart. I'm doing this because I got some very positive feedback from the makeover I did on Monday, and I thought I'd show people how to make them. To start, what I'm going to do is I'm going to gather some data from Quandl. So this is crude oil prices over the last however many years by day. So the first thing you need to do is just grab this Quandl code up here on the right hand side. So I'm going to copy that. And then in Tableau, I'm going to choose Connect to Data. And I'm going to pick, I'm going to pick the Web Data Connector. And I'm going to type in data dot the information lab dot co dot uk and on the information labs web data connectors page you'll see there's a list of, of options here on the left hand side so I'm going to go ahead and choose Quandl and I'm going to just simply paste the Quandl code here and choose get headers okay so now we've got a date field and that's going to be a date and I'm going to choose, and then I could pick some other options here, uh, etc. So, oh, sorry, the value should be, let's just make that a string for now, because we can always convert it once we get inside of Tableau. So let's choose Get Data. And what Tableau is doing now is it's making a call to, through the Web Data Connector, calling the API for Quandl, and downloading the data. So you can see here, if we just click on the View Data button, you'll see we've got the, uh, the date, the value, which is actually the crude oil price, and the number of records. Okay, so we know that the value should actually be, uh, we're going to change the data type for that and make it a decimal. And let's move it down to the measures. So now we can just start building some charts. So I'm going to go ahead and right click and drag date to the column shelf. And I'm going to start by choosing the monthly level. And then I'm going to right click on my value field and I'm going to rename it and call it the crude oil price. And I also want to change the aggregation for this because if I just drag it into the view in the rows, you see it's giving me the sum of the crude oil price, but I actually want it to be the average crude oil price. So I'm going to right click on it again, change the default properties, the aggregation to an average, and now I'll get the monthly average price. And you can see I just get a pretty simple blue line here. Okay, that's great, but I think it's a little bit more impactful if we go ahead and we make an area chart and a line chart combined. So I'm going to go ahead and drag crude oil price to the, uh, the right axis again. And you'll see I basically get the same thing. I'm going to right click and choose synchronize. I'm going to make my first, uh, I'm going to go over here to my marks card. Let's go ahead and leave that as, uh, as all and change the color to black. And then I'm going to go to my secondary axis and make this an area chart. And I'm going to also make that, maybe I'll make that like a gray or something like that, maybe even a little bit lighter. Okay. And then I want to go ahead and move these marks to the front so my lines are on top. And there you have a, a, a line chart that's much, to me, it looks much more impactful. Now, one thing to keep in mind is that when you create an area chart, um, you should almost always, I don't know of a case where you wouldn't, but you should start the axis at zero. So now you'll see we go from May 1987 to December 2015. But I don't like how when you create an area chart, you get these gaps. So I'm going to go ahead and right click on my axis and choose edit axis. And I'm going to fix my axis. I'm going to fix the start to be, uh, it is, I think I said it's May of 1987. So let's choose May 1st. And then my end is going to be December of 2015. So let me click in a calendar again. Okay. So maybe I'll just type it in here, 31st and hit OK. I'm going to go ahead and remove my title. Hit OK. And now you see the space gets filled up nice and neat. All right, so from there, I believe May for May was my first one, yeah. All right, so what I want to do from here is um, I like to go ahead and add the labels on the, on the, uh, the end point. So I'm going to label the line ends and allow them to, uh, so choose show mark labels. And I'm going to just label the end of the line. 
Okay, and I, I'm going to go ahead and change my number format to be currency, but I need it to be in US currency, so I'll hit OK there. All right, and I'm going to go ahead and hide this axis now because we don't need that anymore. And there we go. So I could do a couple other things like maybe dropping in the historical average. So let's go ahead and put that in there so that looks nice. Uh, maybe let's uh, format that. I prefer like maybe a dotted line, make it like gray or something like that. And then I'm going to choose format, get rid of my grid lines um, to clean up the viz a little bit. Uh, this looks like it probably needs to be, I need to edit this line. And this time let's go ahead and uh, I'm going to make it custom and say average plus the value. And let's make it a little bit darker. So that makes it a little bit easier to see. And I'm going to untick the show recalculated line. And uh, that looks like it's good to go. Okay. So, um, all right. So from there, uh, it's just a matter of uh, doing some additional cleanup. But again, I just wanted to show you how to add the, uh, how, to, how to combine a line chart and an area chart to make a really nice looking visualization. So I hope you found this useful and that you'll be able to put it into practice yourself. Take care.